A modern submarine is the crowning achievement of the technological progress of any state. Since it incorporates all the most modern technologies, it poses a great threat to the enemy. Its main task is to remain in the shadows and wait for its time, and then deliver a crushing blow. But even a submarine can be detected and destroyed. In this video, we will also talk about ways to detect submarines. Now, many of you might have noticed that in most of the photos and videos of military submarines taken at either the factory or at the docks, the submarine's propeller is covered up. However, few people know why they do this or why it is actually critical for the crew and the entire fleet of the country. The answer to this question is simple. Espionage. The fact is that ever since the first submarine was invented, there's been a standoff between submarines and the means of detecting them. This struggle reached its peak during the years of the Cold War, when submarines were no longer used solely as the means of naval raider warfare and amphibious delivery, but also as mobile launchers for tactical and strategic missiles, including those with nuclear warheads. Of course, the propeller isn't the most secret part of the submarine, since the submarine is literally crammed with high-tech secret equipment. The problem is that, unlike everything else, the propeller is in plain sight, and therefore it could be useful to conceal it in situations when it isn't hidden in the water. Potential enemy experts can use the size and shape of the blades, as well as the propeller's other characteristics, to calculate many useful specifications of a particular submarine. Intelligence is just as interested in the speed of the submarine as in its sound trail, which indicates how detectable it would be underwater. By the way, unlike civilian ships, submarines use seven-bladed propellers because their design provides the best levels of low noise and efficiency. Considering that the main advantage of any submarine is its stealth, Detecting it is the first and main step in fighting it. In addition to their main purpose, whether it is a missile carrier or a multi-purpose boat, modern submarines are divided according to the types of power plants that they use. There are three kinds. Diesel electric, nuclear, i.e. with a nuclear reactor, and air independent. Each of these types has both advantages and disadvantages which affect the submarine's detectability and stealth. For example, a diesel electric system allows the boat to stay underwater for a relatively short time because it needs to resurface to recharge the batteries often, thus giving itself away. Currently, boats with such systems are used mostly as coastal defensive boats. The nuclear power plant produces tremendous power accelerates the boat to speeds unattainable to diesel boats, and allows it to stay underwater throughout the entire trip, as there is no longer a need for resurfacing. But in addition to these advantages, a nuclear reactor has some key disadvantages. The reactor requires continuous cooling and the operation of many support systems, which is why the noises emitted by the pumps and compressors of a nuclear submarine are its constant companions and they aren't easy to hide. All the attempts to reduce noise are aimed precisely at dealing with the sounds made by the equipment inside the boat. There's one more disadvantage. The radionuclides, or to put it simply, traces of cesium decay in seawater, which are formed as a result of the nuclear reaction in the reactor. Air-independent power plants are a fairly new invention and seem very interesting and promising. Germany and Sweden have made the most progress in this regard. These systems allow the boat to remain submerged for up to 25 days, while significantly reducing its noise. There is also no need for regular cooling, which is an advantage over nuclear submarines with their most complex and noisy cooling equipment. However, since at the current stage of development, it is impossible to accumulate significant amounts of energy, there's no point in comparing this system with the nuclear one neither in terms of power nor autonomy. Like any underwater object, a boat affects the environment with its presence. In other words, the boat has its own physical fields. 
The more well-known physical fields of a submarine are hydroacoustic, magnetic, hydrodynamic, electrical, low frequency, electromagnetic, thermal, and optical. The isolation of the physical fields of the submarine from the fields of the ocean or the sea underlies all the submarine detection methods. The optical detection method is the simplest and easiest to understand method of visually identifying the boat. But how is it possible, you may ask, since the boat is underwater? Very simple. In this photo, the submarine is at a periscope depth with the periscope mast extended, which is why a characteristic trail is noticeable. If we imagine that the boat is moving at the same depth, but without the extended periscope or other masts, then we could see the entire hull of the submarine from the air, because it would be clearly visible through the water. If the water is sufficiently transparent, the boat can be observed at depths of up to several tens of meters, even with the naked eye. Another method of detection is the method of visual identification of retractable masts. Such devices are installed on many anti-submarine ships and allow one to detect the periscope of the submarine at a distance of several kilometers. The acoustic method is the main method and the most important one. Sound travels much faster in water than it does in air and over distances far greater than any other disturbance. Acoustic method allows one to detect submarines at all depths, doesn't depend on time of day, and little depends on weather conditions and the season. However, the distance, accuracy, and reliability of the results vary greatly depending on the hydrological conditions of the sea. For example, the presence of an underwater sound channel can dramatically increase the detection range and vice versa. The thermocline layer, after which the water temperature, density, and chemical composition change dramatically, serves as a barrier and can make the boat acoustically invisible. The acoustic detection method is divided into active and passive kinds. The passive method is the detection of noise and hydroacoustic signals emitted by the submarine. Depending on the specific device being used, it is also called noise direction finding, noise location, and hydroacoustic observation. The passive method is the main method used by submarines and stationary surveillance systems. The main advantage of the passive method is its stealth. The target doesn't know that it has been detected. It is also worth noting the relatively long range. In some cases, very noisy objects can be detected at distances of 150 nautical miles and the ability to classify targets by the nature of their noise. Simply put, a passive detection method means listening to underwater space using special microphones. The main disadvantage of the passive method is that it is impossible to directly determine the distance to the target. It only gives the direction to the target, that is, the bearing. To determine the distances in the passive mode, one has to use indirect methods or perform tactical maneuvering, taking measurements of acoustic contact from several positions. It is also difficult to determine the acoustic contact against the background of the ocean noise and the sounds of underwater animals. The active method detects the sound reflected from the target or the echo emitted by the sonar. The method is also called echo direction finding or echolocation. Sonar and sonobuoy operate by this principle. Simply put, the active method works by the principle of dolphin or whale echolocation. A special device emits a directional sound signal of a certain frequency. The signal reaches the target, is reflected from it, and is captured by special sensors when it returns. As a result, we get a very accurate picture of the underwater environment. The advantage of the active method is the ability to directly determine not only the bearing, but also the distance to the target. The disadvantages are the inability to classify targets, a shorter detection range than in the passive method, the disclosure of one's own location, as well as the inability of stealth detection. The enemy submarine will hear the emitted signal at a distance of about twice as far at which the active search acoustics will hear the reflected echo. Magnetometry Detection Method Now, this method is based on the search for distortions in the Earth's magnetic field, that is, magnetic anomalies. The presence of large amounts of ferromagnets, such as the metal hull of a sub, creates anomalies large enough to be detected 
by a special magnetometer. The advantages of the magnetometry method are its simplicity and independence from the measurement environment. The Earth's magnetic field in water behaves almost the same as in the air. Moreover, this method is passive, that is, the target doesn't know that it has been detected. Its main disadvantage is the short detection range. Magnetic anomalies quickly smooth out with distance, and in order to determine the presence of an anomaly, one needs to be close to it. Such sensors are installed mainly on anti-submarine helicopters and aircraft. If an aircraft flies near a submarine, the latter will be detected with a high degree of probability. In modern submarines, low magnetic steel is used. Some boats are additionally coated with a special carbon fiber compound on top of steel. An example of this is the German submarine type 212A. Radio Location Method Water is impervious to the waves used in radio location, so radar detection of submarines is only possible when any part of them is above the water. That is, detection is limited mainly to submarines in the periscope position. But the nuclear submarines may not surface to the periscope depth long enough to avoid detection, and this is the main disadvantage of this method. Gas Method Gas analyzers detect the presence of hydrocarbons in the air, which are characteristic of combustion products. In other words, the presence of submarine diesel exhaust. Obviously, this method is only suitable for submarines using a diesel engine. This is its main drawback. Moreover, its reliability is highly dependent on weather conditions, wind, strength, humidity, and temperature. Thermal detection, or heat trail detection, is a type of infrared method aimed at detecting predominantly nuclear submarines. The fact is that outboard water is used as a cooler for the external circuit of the reactor of the nuclear submarine. When the water is dumped back overboard, it is warmer than the surrounding water. The method has gained popularity because the thermal footprint left by the boat is much larger than the boat itself, which means it is easier to detect. Moreover, the trail tends to rise to the surface over time, all the while blurring and cooling. The trace that comes to the surface can be detected even from space. Wake Detection Method A wake is a disturbed strip of water that is left behind the stern of a moving ship. The duration and length of the wake depends on the displacement and speed of the boat, as well as the state of the sea. Considering that in order to maintain stealth, the submarines move at low speeds, one shouldn't count on locating them using this method under normal conditions. However, this method proved to be excellent in detecting ships and even better as a way of homing some torpedoes. There are some other less significant methods that are still being used sometimes. For example, a method of chemical analysis based on traces of cesium radionuclides in seawater. This method was developed in the 1980s in the USSR and was later used experimentally in the Navy of this country. Unfortunately, there is no other reliable information about this method. Nowadays, no single method guarantees successful detection or even a stable level of results, so all methods are used together. With the improvement in the stealth characteristics of nuclear submarines, the difference, for example, between the temperatures of the cooler and outboard water has decreased so much that it has become poorly distinguishable by the existing sensors. The same can be said about the magnetic anomaly of submarines with titanium or composite hulls. Since a significant increase in the sensitivity of sensors is not expected anytime soon, the emphasis has been shifted to the complex processing of large amounts of data collected by several detection methods. So, the focus has shifted to improving the capabilities of the processor and the accumulation of observation data in order to detect the target against the natural background of the sea. Thus, the use of an extended towed antenna of the SIRTAS system, which consists of many hydrophones, has qualitatively increased the acoustic contrast of targets, according to the U.S. statement. The acoustic signature of the wake, if present, is complemented by the acoustic contact of the source, decomposed into frequencies, and the electric potential between the upper and lower surfaces of the boat hull. Huge arrays of data are collected and promptly supplement each other, eventually providing not only the possibility of detecting a submarine at a particular point, 
but also quite accurately determining its type, displacement, and even the reactor model. Indirect detection methods have played and continue to play an important role too. The boat can't always keep the highest level of stealth. Sooner or later, it is forced to reveal itself, or at least reduce this very level. All indirect methods are based on attempts to predict the place and time when the boat will lower its stealth and take advantage of it. Well, that's all for today, friends. Be sure to like this video. Be sure to leave a comment on what you learned, and we'll see you again next time.